You got us, Coach? I got you. All right. Uh, raise your hand in chat. We'll get going, guys. Start with you, Sarah. Hey, Sean, did you come out of the game with any injuries? No, by the grace of God, we didn't. You know, or we, we came out fairly clean. So, um, you know, a couple of little nicks and bruises, but nothing that's uh, going to keep anybody out. And so that's a uh, it's a very positive thing where we can now start to establish somewhat of a continuity um, with the same groups being able to work together two weeks in a row. So that's a that's a blessing. When Matthew gets the ball down 10, down seven and. What what's I know he's had, I think, 45 uh, fourth quarter overtime comebacks, but what sense you get from him about just his mindset in those situations? You know, I think the best thing that I could say about yesterday, I never, I never felt like he pressed Sarah. You know, we were down 14 early. We were down 10 late. I thought he let the game come to him. I, I thought he made really good decisions throughout. And I don't know exactly what his numbers ended up, but I thought he was very much in control, had great command, thought he made great decisions um, throughout the course of the game based on what they presented defensively. Um, and I think that patience and ability to just play one play at a time was key and critical for the poise that was reflected, being able to score on uh, the last four offensive series, two touchdowns, two field goals. I thought he was great, um, but I thought he let it come to him. I didn't think he pressed. There can sometimes be a tendency, not, not him, but just in general as a player, even as a coach, um, when you feel like you got to get it all back in one play. And I thought he, you know, he took what they gave him and then there were some opportunities to push the ball. And um, it was when the coverage dictated and he made great throws and he had a chance to be able to let his back foot hit and, and let things go in rhythm and guys made plays for him and he had the protection. So I thought he was outstanding, Sarah. I thought he was, you know, uh, so vital for the, for us to have a chance to be in the position that we were in based on just how the game unfolded. A couple of years ago, you guys dealt with a lot of injuries, and he was one of them later in the season. Obviously, the quarterback is a really important position. But what does it do for you guys that, yes, you have injuries on the offense, but they have him throwing the ball? Well, I think he instills a belief, you know, because he's uh, he's got such confidence, such experience. He's, he's so smart. Um, and then physically, he can, you know, do a lot of things that are really special based on uh, the work that he puts in. So... Uh, that that's a big deal to be able to have the right guy at the switch. And, um, you know, I think he, I think the best, the best players, they elevate others around them. And that certainly is what Matthew does as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Adam. Hey, Sean, just to stick with Matthew for a second, like, can you walk us through his two goal line audible calls? Uh, in turn, well, I mean, you know, we had like, a couple different plays call. I, I think just the command, I mean, you know, he recognizes the looks that that we were potentially wanted to run the plays, um, and he got us he got us in and out of the right you know looks, and uh, they led to ended up two two of them were touchdown runs, and then obviously the touchdown pass that he and Kyron connected on um, that was kind of just a called play right there, but just the command you know to be able to call multiple plays and for him to be able to get us in and out of that um, versus the looks that we were hunting up based on the opponent. Um, that was big, and I thought the guys executed on on both those plays in particular that led to Kyron Williams' touchdown runs. What went into your calculations on the fake punt? Man, you're asking some deep questions that uh, I don't want to give away to. I, I, here's sure. what went into, here's here's what I would say: it was fourteen nothing. It was a scenario that we thought we could have a look for it. Um, I thought the guys executed. I thought Nico Kalinich's block at the point of attack was key and critical, where he secures the first level and then ends up, you know, kind of throwing a last little uh, block on a second level defender scraping over the top. And that allowed Ronnie to be able to put his foot in the ground and level off to be able to get just enough for the first down. But I think Chase um, and Coach Frost deserve a ton of credit. That was something that we had worked on throughout the course of the week. Um, and when the look presented and that, that ended up, you know, it was 14, nothing, fourth down and six. I think the big thing was it was a third and 12. And for Tyler Johnson to be able to get six yards on the check down on the previous play that, made it not such a long situation. That was a, that was a big factor that ended up leading to points. And so uh, I thought special teams came up, you know, with a, a cup, a handful of just key and critical plays that, you know, gave us a chance to be in the fight. Uh, that one, obviously making all of our kicks was big, the extra points and then the field goals. 
And then obviously uh, Xavier Smith's punt return was, was outstanding. What a great decision. What an excellent job. Good, smart decision by Omar Spates, not the block in the back right there too. Uh, X ends up winning there, but what went into that was great execution by Ronnie. Good job by Chase. Uh, too long of an answer for you there. Sorry. Uh, Justin Dietrich came in for two really critical um, blocking plays on that uh, that big drive after the punt return. Like he's been a guy who kind of been waiting for his turn, got the call up. Like what did you see from him yesterday, and have you seen from him throughout? Yeah, just improvement. You know, he's a tough competitor that can really have some interior flex. Came in, uh, probably hadn't had any reps at that screen. They ended up bringing a fire zone, and he ended up kind of snatching the guy that was looping for a contain, and it ended up allowing us to be able to get the screen going and then had a good, you know, block on a play pass. So he did a great job. I mean, it was pretty gnarly the way Logan Bruss's finger looked. He looked like uh, he was doing his best impersonation of a Brian Baldinger or Tory Holt, but uh, it was uh, – it was cool for Justin to step in there and uh, he didn't blink and, and he did a great job executing on the few plays he was in. Thanks, Sean. You're welcome. Hey, Sean, speaking of uh, Xavier, has, did his performance yesterday, uh, has that caused you to rethink or reevaluate how you're looking at uh, the punt returner position right now? Well, he'll continue to be the punt returner if that's what you're asking. Um, he, did a, he did a good job. He had two ops yesterday, one fair catch and then one big return that – um, is obviously well documented, um, and I thought uh, he's really put a lot of work in. It's a cool reflection of the work paying off, um, him continuing to just stay steady, and uh, and then being able to have the opportunity to deliver in a, an important moment for the team. So he will be the punt returner moving forward. Um, so happy for X. And, and along those lines, I mean, what was it like just seeing the entire sideline? basically erupt as he's ripping off that 38 yard return yeah those are those are some of the most fun things to go back and you watch and you know dan demetrison does a great job of uh kind of capturing a lot of that so did the tv crews you know so when you look at those things and you see you know the sports are an amazing thing in terms of the emotions that it can elicit um in a positive way um when things go that way but that was really cool i think there was a ton of guys that, that there's a lot of people that really care about x appreciate the work that they've seen him put in um, and then to be able to get an opportunity to deliver for his team and, and make that kind of play guys were jacked for him and, and obviously for our football team for, for that, giving us a chance. Thank you. You're welcome. Why? Uh, Byron Young had a big game yesterday. What do you make of his performance and what do you think are the biggest things that he's improved on this season? He's really coachable. You know, he's so conscientious. You know, Joe Caniglio does a good job with that group. I thought he, I thought he didn't hesitate yesterday. I thought uh, made plays in the run. I mean, shoot, even, you know, the big hit that he makes on Juwan Jennings early in the game, you know, he's a zone dropper playing visual on Purdy ends up triggering. Um, it was a really good play. Ended up making some impact plays in the run game. And then at the end of the half to have the sack fumble, that was huge for us. Uh, he, he's got a great motor. He's so strong at the point of attack. He's just physically got a really impressive stature, but I think he's just continuing to mature. Um, like I said, so conscientious, you give him some things to improve on and he really puts it to light. He really puts the work in um, to see that have the practice preparation and the practice performance equal game reality. And um, he was a game ball guy for our defense. And, um, and I was, uh, that was cool to be able to see because of some of the things that, you know, we had looked at, at him to be able to improve upon, and he did that. And now let's continue to use that momentum for the right reasons. But uh, love BY was happy for him. And uh, Tutu Atwell obviously had a big game, but he also had some crucial, you know, catches early on that maybe got overshadowed by the big one at the end. What about him makes you, you know, want to trust him in, in some crucial situations? Well, that's he, he's done a good job with that, Wyatt. I, I think, uh, you know, a couple key third downs that he made catches on. Obviously, the deep ball uh, on our on our sideline was a great track over his shoulder. And then I think you know he's I think he ended up with what ninety three yards on on the day, but he had a forty eight yard pi that doesn't go on the stats, but it moved our offense forward forty eight yards that led to a scoring so or led to a scoring drive. So um, you know, it, there's there's a lot of trust. I think he and Matthew have a good trust. Uh, he did a lot of really good things for us last year. And let's see if we can build on that. But uh, Tutu, uh, Tutu made some big plays for us. He knew that he was going to get an opportunity, um, and he delivered. And, uh, again, just just happy for him. And now let's see how we move forward right the right way. Thanks, Sean.
You're welcome. Here. Uh, hey, Sean, any um, update uh, on uh, timeline or progress for Cooper and may the other guy and some of the, the, not the other guys, but the guys that are on IR? No updates on those guys. Um, you know, when it gets to the point that they can start returning um, to practice and, or, you know, we would end up taking them off of that with the DIR, then I'll kind of let you know. As far as Cooper, you know, he's, he's attacking every single day. Um, not going to be available for this week if that's what you're asking. Um, and in terms of like after what happened, the conversation, you know, you would have with Reggie uh, on Monday, the first two weeks, how did you go into like today? Were you bracing for, were, were you confident it was going to be good news or are you, you know, hesitant to, to find out what, you know, what's coming in terms of injuries? How did you approach today? What the hell kind of, here, here's what I'll tell you. I, I was confident, Gary, based on the feedback that I got from Reggie after the game that I thought we came out clean. Um, the Arizona game was unique because, you know, there, there was a couple things that were some unique circumstances, but um, if, if you're asking if that was something that I was, uh, you know, holding my breath about, well, hell yeah. If you, if you were in my position after the first couple weeks, I was really grateful that guys came out clean. I think that's one of the worst things about this job, Gary, is seeing the work that's put in and guys, you know, missing out with, uh, you know, things that are out of their control. And so I was, uh, I was happy for that. And then what I'm also happy for now is we can start to develop some continuity. That's been, if you were to say what's been the most frustrating thing, or really the second most, first thing is for the players. The second thing is, is that, you know, we talk about a process. There hasn't been a process when we can't work together. Um, and there's been so many, you know, there's been so little abilities to get guys, whether it's our offensive line or Matthew with some of the receivers, um, opportunities to build on practice repetitions. And every single rep is so important when they are, um, minimal throughout the course of the week, just based on when the season starts to unfold and the physicality of uh, the nature at which these games are played. So I'm gl I'm very glad that uh, that we came out of this clean, and now I want to see us continue to improve so that we can play better quality football, uh, which will lead to the best opportunities to get the results that we want. So that's going to be big for us. And finally, um, has Colby Parkinson, has he kind of been what you anticipated? Has he given you more than, than maybe you anticipated? Uh, you know, I was a lot, I was really confident in him. I, I really liked what I had seen from him from afar, uh, you know, going against Seattle a couple times a year and having a lot of crossover film. Um, I think he's better in terms of, you know, even more impressive human. He's made key contributions in both phases. Again, I talked about Tutu's P.I., uh, you know, the PI that he draws on Devondre Campbell down the right sideline um, ended up leading us being in field goal range right there. I thought he was really good at the point of attack. I think he's made some key plays in the pass game. Nick Cayley does a great job with that group. I also thought Hunter Long played a bunch of snaps and um, ended up being a real factor for us. But he has been, you know, everything I had hoped for and probably a little bit more. And I think he's only going to get better, Gary. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Maria. Hey, Sean, when you talk about wanting to start faster, what does that mean to you as a coach? I think just playing better. You know, I, I think being able to kick first downs, to be able to stop people from scoring on opening possessions. So I, think, I don't think there's any magic formula. It's let's get some stops. Let's play complimentary football. Let's try to be able to get on the scoreboard and try to be able to establish a little bit of a lead. Um, and we haven't done that uh, nearly good enough, but uh it is about how you finish, but I would like us to start better. I, I definitely am really proud of the resilience and the grit of the group. You'd prefer not to find out about it being down 14 nothing and putting ourselves in some of the holes that we've been in, but um, they continue to battle. They continue to fight, and for that, I was proud of them. Um, but I think starting fast is simply a, a, you know, as clear as let's, let's just play better. Let's play complimentary football. Let's get stops, um, and then let's turn those stops into points uh, from an offensive perspective. Also, you talked a few weeks ago about the confidence that you had in the defense. Yesterday, Troy Reader was from start to finish all over the field. Just talk, talk about that, your evaluation of him and just his growth over time. Yeah, Maria, I, th I thought he did a really good job. I thought there was a two-play sequence um, in the tight red area that forced them to kick a field goal. Whereas a second and two, 
Kobe Turner uh, and Tyler Davis do a good job of defeating their blocks. Troy ended up making kind of the center miss, and all three of them collapsed on the ball to force it to a third and one. Then on the third down and one, we do a good job of kind of holding the line of scrimmage, and then Troy scrapes over the top, kind of be able to, you know, take an opportunity to trigger. Um, ended up leading to a TFL where they have to kick a field goal, and, and it kept it at a 10-point game instead of a 14. So that was a two-play sequence that was huge by Troy. Um, I thought he was active. I thought we were better on the front, especially in the run game. I know Purdy got 42 yards um, on non-designed quarterback runs, but that's an excellent football team. They're so well coached. They've got great schemes. Um, and I thought we did a much better job of, of hitting the run. Perfect no, but I do think as a result of us playing better on the first line, that enabled Troy to be able to have some opportunities um, to make some more plays. And, uh, and I thought he did that yesterday. I thought he did a good job. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Jordan, then we'll wrap with Eric. Hey, Sean, um, the air explosives uh, against your defense are um, just not, I guess, not what we're used to seeing um, fr from the group at times. I know that, again, it's a lot of it's come from quarterbacks when they're creating um, out of structure. What Can you kind of take us into what you're seeing in, in that regard? Um I know it's more than one thing, um, but particularly when you're facing a quarterback that can create and uh, avoid that first contact. Yeah, I, I think the big thing is, um, you know, it's just that, you know, we talk about explosives or rushing coverage going together. And then when you, when you play some of these quarterbacks that have extended plays, keep their eyes down the field and then are able to deliver balls. And I think each one of them, like each play has its own individual story. One of those explosives, if you're just looking at it, will be the last play of the game. So uh, you know, that, I think, uh, that led to an explosive that was just, okay, get him down by all means. But I think we've got to do a good job of, of rushing with integrity, not allowing some of these plays to extend, you know, and then some of them are individual efforts. You know, you look at Jennings makes a couple of amazing catches down the field. And then some of them, we got to hit home with a five man rush. They've got a good design on, and, you know, we got to be able to play our techniques a little bit better when they had an explosive um, you know, for a touchdown on, on, on the 31 yarder, but uh, we do, you know, that is other than turnovers, that's the next indicator of, you know, playing really good. I, I don't get really involved in the stats, but the turnovers and then, you know, minimizing the explosives, whether it be through the run game or the pass game, and then creating them on the offensive side of the ball. Those are critical factors for, uh, you know, for being able to be efficient and execute on either side, depending upon how you're looking at it. And we certainly have to do a better job of that. And then um, a slight pivot, but earlier this summer, um, Caleb Williams was talking about how he, the quarterback, one of the quarterbacks he most looks up to and, and wants to model his game after is Matthew Stafford. Um, wondering from your perspective, what on the field specifically, what can a young quarterback who's developing and growing And you? I know you've, you've watched Caleb cause he's been in the, in the area too um what does the young quarterback learn from a player like Matthew Stafford well I, I think there's a lot of respect for the toughness the the competitiveness of Matthew the ability to always just kind of stay in the fight and then you know some of the different things in terms of how he's beating you with his ability to be able to manipulate coverage through his eyes understanding how to try to move defenders that are visual on him to open up and expand windows um, you know, you heard Stroud talk about that as well, but I, I just think it's the mastery of some of the finer things about the position that those who play it really appreciate and understand. And that's a really elite group of guys you're talking about. And I think when you talk to any of these younger quarterbacks or quarterbacks that have played the position, there's a lot of respect and reverence for the way that Matthew goes about it from coaches and from players um, because they can really appreciate the finer things that maybe, um, you know, go lost unless you're really evaluating and know what's going on from an all 22 perspective. And I would imagine that's probably what Caleb was alluding to um, when he ended up saying, you know, how much he likes Matthew. He's a fun guy to watch too. And you can see he enjoys playing the game. You know, th those are always good people to emulate are the people that look like they're having fun and there's a joy with the way that they go about uh, competing um, and still playing a sport. Do you, um, I mean, I remember when Matthew first got here, you, talk to us uh, aside of like some of the things that he does because not not all of us had sort of watched him as closely as as you guys did when when you studied when you were studying to bring him in um does do you kind of get a kick out of like the quote unquote the kids in in the league who are, are sort of shouting out Matthew Stafford as like the guy they want to play like 
Are you saying that he's old as hell? Certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's cool. I, you know what I think? I think it's earned based on his body of work and his resume over time. Uh, the old dog still has some cool tricks that he can bust out. Um, and I think, um, I think, uh, you know, the respect that you earn from your peers, especially at such a special fraternity of people that play that position, that's really cool. And anybody that I really respect or that I've talked to, whether it be player or somebody that coaches the position, there's a ton of reverence and respect for Matthew based on what he's done um, all throughout his career, not exclusive to just his time with us. Thanks. You're welcome. Here. Coach, congratulations. Uh, given everything that uh, you, given everything that you had to manage this season and your relationship and your history with Kyle Shanahan, um, with with the out, with the game's outcome, how does out coaching and out scheming your opponent uh, psychologically affect you and your coaching staff? Yeah, I wouldn't say that was the case. Um, I, I mean, Kyle's somebody that I hold in the highest of regard. I don't know that it was out coaching or out scheming that I, I don't necessarily think that was illustrated. I think our guys made enough plays to stay in the fight. Um, you know, Kyle mentioned it. There were some opportunities where that game could have really gone in their favor in a big way. And, um, you know, we had some things that we created that went our way. And, and then some things where you sometimes, you know, have some breaks that go your way and it was vice versa, but it's a great football team. He's as good a coach as there is. Um, they do such an excellent job, and, and three weeks is really early in the season. What I was proud of from our group is resilience, grit, the mental toughness to stay in the fight, um, and then to be able to make some plays in those critical moments that gave ourselves a chance to be able to come away with a W. But um, that, that, that's a great football team, and uh, and it's way too early to say anything like that. And I definitely thought, um, you know, he does a great job, as always. They create a bunch of conflicts. They're well-coached. They got good personnel and players, um, and we just happen to have some things go our way, some of which, you know, was uh, the players' just mental toughness, and then sometimes uh, you do have some things that are out of your control that go in your favor, and, and that was the case as well. And then, as you alluded to, explosives, uh, you know, prove, proved to be huge in deciding the game's outcome. Um, you had consecutive explosive plays with X's return um, and the uh, P.I., that uh, Parkinson was able to draw. Yep. When those when those two things happen, what's going through your mind? Let's make the field goal kick when uh, when we got five seconds left. I you know I thought it was a big play too for Kyron to be able to get a six yard run after that, and then they ended up using their timeout, and then Josh ends up knocking it true with two seconds left. And so um, you know I, I'm not like I told you guys before. I'm not big into the stats. I just know that when that PI got thrown, that advanced the ball down there just like as, as if you complete it. Um, and so that was huge. But what what a cool deal for Xavier Smith to be able to step up, make a great decision. I really think our special teams as a whole was a big edge yesterday. Steal a possession on a fake punt by Ronnie Rivers. Make all of our kicks. And then uh, ultimately be able to have that big punt return when we only had two opportunities. Uh, one was a fair catch, and then obviously that one by X was big. But uh, huge job by those guys, and then uh, and then to be able to finish the game was big. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thanks, guys.